Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. Welcome, welcome once again. Now, this is the part three of traditional arts in Nigeria. Now we've discussed the part one of it, we've talked about the part two, we've talked about the part three. Now in each of those parts, I could remember from part one, we talk about, you know, the knock arts, the Ife arts, the Benin arts, you know, we talked about this part two, we talked about other arts. Now in this part three, we are going to look at the remaining two because I told you that the traditional Nigerian arts, they are 10 in number. It might be more, but for this course, for the course of this study, We'll be looking at what 10 of it all right now let's dive into what we have for today now today we'll be looking at the mbari mode house you can call it the mbari art it is the mbari art or the mbari mode house art all right mbari is a visual arts form that is practiced by the evil people in the southeastern part of what nigeria consisting of a secret uh, like consists of a sacred building it consists of a secret building a, a, a two-story house constructed as a proprietary right now the mbari house of the Oere Ibo, which are large open sized square plane was shelter contained many life-size painted figures now sculptures and mold to appease the, uh, the Alosi, which is a deity. Now, I would want to take this thing so that you understand this. Now, the Mbari Art is a two-story building. Sometimes it, could, it might not be two stories. Sometimes it could just be, you know, a leveled building that houses what? That is built for the Alosi. Now, the Alosi is known as what? Is the gods of the land. The god of the land is a deity. You can call it Alosi or Allah. So, now this earth goddess, the Alosi is the earth goddess, with other words, deities of thunder and water are what is housed in the Imbari mud house. So they built this thing for the god of the land. Now, now the Imbari house are made as a gift to Allah, as a way to acknowledge Allah's charitable and what's overreaching presence. Now, some Imbari house are dedicated strictly and solely to Allah. Sometimes, however, other gods are represented along with what Allah in the world in the structure. Mbari house take years to build, and building them is what regarded as sacred. So not every person can just come out from nowhere to build the Mbari house. No, no, it is it is it is a sacred thing, and it is ordered by the gods. It's the gods that tell them, okay, this is when I want you to build this house for me, or when I don't want you to build the house, and it takes a very long period of time to build this house. Because a lot of things are involved in building the Mbare Allah house. All right, now let's continue. Now, along with being representations of what abundance and what harmony, they are most usually created during times of peace and stability. A ceremony is performed within the structure for what a gathering of towns leaders. Now, after the ritual, after the ritual is completed, going in or even looking at the Mbare house is what's considered a taboo. Now, after this ritual, after, you know, during the building of this house, they gather the chiefs, they gather the call people, they threw a party. Like, it's a ceremony, it's a ritual ceremony that is being done in respect to the dedication of that house. Now, immediately they are done with that, the house is left on its own. Now, it is considered that nobody should go into that place, and even looking at it is even 
seen as what? As taboo. Now, the building was not maintained and it was left to decay on its own. Like the elements, they just leave everything for the building to decay on its own. That is, it is a form of sacrifice. Like the gods, you own those buildings, do whatsoever you want to do with it. Nobody goes in there, nobody enters there. They just leave it for it to decay on its own. Based on the fact that even the roof are made with what? Tashis and bamboo and leaves, palm fronts. That's what they make the roof out of. So, but that does not mean that the, the house does not last. Some of them last, they stay you know, for a comfortable period of time. So that is one major um, uh, uh, aspect of this Mbari house. However, Chino Achebe, a renowned Nigerian novelist and a, liter uh, and a literary tourist, said something in, his one, in one of his essays on the Mbari. Now I quote, he said, Mbari was a celebration through art of the world and of living Sorry, let me come back again. I'll just I'll have to take it again now. He said, Mbari was a celebration through art of the world and of the living. Now, Mbari was a celebration through art of the world and of life lived in it. Now, it was performed by the community on the command by its presiding deity, usually the earth goddess, Allah, who combined two formidable roles in the Igbo patterns as fountains of creativity in the world and the custodian of the moral order in human society. So this is exactly what Chunachebe said about the Mbari art. Now he's trying to explain that this is, 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 is a building that, 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 shows, that shows the deity, that shows appreciation to the deity and in memory of, you know, of life for, for giving them life to live here on earth. And sometimes this Mbari art, if a family, for example, is undergoing, is undergoing a serious challenge, like, you know, like pain, maybe they're losing their children. Now, the deity or the person in charge of that deity might tell them, okay, you need to do this, you need to do this, yeah, by building the Mbari house so that such things will not re or call again. So that is one of the major reasons why the Mbari people create this building. Now, the Mbari in Igbo means creation. So whenever you hear the word Mbari in Igbo, it means what? Creation. Now, the Mbari people believe that sad occurrence is a punishment from their gods. So they build mud houses to these words, gods. Now, if you watch, they feel sad occurrence happened. It's like a punishment to their gods, as in from their gods to somebody. So whenever you're undergoing such things, maybe, for example, there's what we call the Obanje, beautiful. I don't know for some of you that is, you know, within the south, south, south east, you understand that word where now the Obanje spirit. So when, if a family is undergoing such spirit, now they advise them to do what? To build the Mbari house. That will now, you know, appease the gods. Okay, these people values me and then. So the Mbari art mainly is seen as an art for what? For rituals. It's an art for the gods. Okay, now let's look at the location and the medium where and how they make this Mbari art. Now, the major medium for this Mbari art is clay. That is the major medium for Mbari art. They use clay to make the works, to build the house. No concrete, no nothing, just from sound and from termite. Uh, this ant hill, they break the ant hill, mash the clay, and they use it to build exactly what you're seeing here. See how sophisticated and how interesting this building looks. All right, but it's quite unfortunate that nowadays that that this art has actually gone extinct. They are no longer practicing it. See, after the Biafran War, you know, after everything that happened, they killed some of the artists and some of the people that create some of these things. So now they no longer they no longer practice this in um, the East. But maybe there are some people that might have been practicing it, but on a low, on a very low key. This art is gradually going extinct. But thank God we have you know documented history. So keep this in our mind. So bear it in mind that there is an art known as what? The Mbare Ayo. The Mbare Art. All right. And now it is located, the location for Mbare Art is in Oweri, in Imo State. That is where the Mbare Art is located. So bear this in mind that Mbare Art is made with clay. And its location is in Oweri, Imo State. So that is where you find the Mbare Art. So let's just take a good... Let's look at the characteristic features of the Mbari art. Now, the Mbari art figures have cylindrical torso. 
and generally what elongated parts of what of the body if you go back and see some of the previous slide i showed you you now understand how this art looks like now let's do a quick let's just go back fine beautiful now i guess this image tells more you see how long the the uh, the, the, the cylindrical shape the body have and they always they place their hands on their shoulder you see they always fold their hands that's just the nature of the art or elongated shapes and to mention but a few now the second characteristic features of umbari art is that the mud houses have geometrical what, designs on their interior now if you look at the paint and the, the pictures we saw before now you see geometric designs on the interior of the house just like the cavemen as they painted on the wall and on the ceiling of your house the same thing applies to what the umbari people but this time this house is intentionally built to serve a particular purpose either as a sacrifice to appease the gods or as ordained by the gods in that point in time in the land of what umbari so now the umbari people they do this now on the wall of the houses you see geometrical shape designs you know to beautify the place angular shape circle you know and those shapes still reflect on the sculptural pits of the work now finally the mbari house is made out of what mud that is one thing you should put at the back of your mind they don't use concrete they don't use any other thing to make this house but mold or true apart from the roof where they use tashes palm front and any other um, reed yeah, you know about all right having said that now let's consider some of those pictures now look at the image of the mbari ayo if you watch closely, you see the design, the geometric designs on the wall of the house. You see how beautiful it looks. Very interesting. So that is exactly what those people did even before the colonial master came to, you know, colonize us here in Africa. All right. So now the next art we are going to look at is the Hausa art. The Hausa art. Now this is another interesting art in Nigeria that cannot be overemphasized. Reason being because of the acts of what their creativity and relief on the wall. Now the houses don't believe in sculptural works. They rather they rather make their works on utilitarian items like calabashes. To mention, but if you as we proceed, you see more of what the house the house are at. Now the house are at is influenced by the Islamic belief. They do not encourage real figure representation. They don't encourage real figure representation. It's against their belief. However, they prefer going with what? Signs and symbols, letters and fonts, angle, angular shape, triangular shape, geometric shapes, per se, you know, to, to, to express themselves. And they so appreciate relief work of art. It could be engraving, it could be what? Embossed. Like what you're seeing here is an embossed relief. It's a very a low relief. All right. Now, the house art is often tied to the functional words, objects such as boil or fabric, calabash containers made from what dried out what ground guard. Now, they are often decorated with vibrant abstract patterns, like the previous image you saw. Those the the, the work of art they are designed with vibrant abstract words, abstract patterns. Now, for for, 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 for centuries, the Hausa artist has dyed textile and indigo, turning this fabric into richly embroidered wood, garment. If you see the Hausas, you see their, 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 their designs. They, 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 they like the tie and dye. They introduce that. That's why we have the dye pit in Kanu, you know, where they make a large number of this tie and dye. Well, it's quite unfortunate that now, you know, everybody, we are no longer interested in making these things ourselves so would rather import but it's a shame on our part but thank god you're learning this so you can actually revive some of this art and bring them back to life back then in those days this is what our forefathers do to make money to even make the country the giant of africa which is which we have actually lost but that notwithstanding the houses they have showed you know a key role in utilitarian materials and you can see that all over both in their work in the clothes they wear in their houses to mention but a few all right so now historically the work of specialized house craftsmen such as leather work blacksmithing the weavers could be highly detailed and intricate and would be trade um, and can be traded across great distance to be sold what in marketplaces now if you see this work 
the artwork you're seeing in front of you on the slide, you see, you see the calabash, you see this other kind of calabash. I don't know if this is, it is made or it grows like that. That's a clay pot there about. Whatsoever it is. Now, they, you can buy this for any amount because you can't get it anyhow. And now look at the time, look at the intricate designs it has on the body. Very beautiful artworks. So this is exactly what they do. Now they transport these things and sell them. They export them outside. So many arts, many house artisans continue this artistic what, tradition till today. Some of them are still producing some of all these things. If you go down to Cannes, you go down to Cardinal, Castina, even in Sokoto, you go down to all these places, you find some of these works. And they are not cheap, I must tell you. They are really not cheap. Now, if imagine a country where we invest in this app. Imagine where we choose to reduce the rate of plastic we use and then encourage this. This is eco-friendly. It is not devastating to our nature because it is natural. So it is encouraging that we using plastic that is killing the ecosystem. What? Somebody will say, Mr. Christopher, are you advertising house or art? Well, uh, yes, if that be the case. But however, I'm just trying to let you understand exactly where we started and where we are now. Okay, so now let's look at the medium in which they produce some of this work. Now, the number one medium they use, they use boils. They use boils. Like I mentioned before now, they get boil, they design the boil. They use fabrics, like clothes. You see embroidering, they weave on clothes. They, 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 they embroider on clothes, make beautiful designs on clothes. On this, they are abada, that's what they call. And they are even the ones that invented the adire that the Yoruba people wear, you know, the popular adire. Now, the place, there's a place known as the dye pit in Kaduna. Now, it's a place where they dye a large quantity of, of, uh, of fabric. But it's quite unfortunate that that company is going extinct, if not already gone extinct. So now the next thing they use is what? A, the calabash. They use the calabash. They transform the calabash into beautiful what, active fat. And they also make what? They also make use of what? Dry guard. It's the same thing as what? The calabash. They get the calabash, they dry it, and they make the design on the back or on the body of this calabash. That's why they used to that's what they use to sell their tools in kafa. Some of them use that preservative, you know, to keep their paper and whatsoever. They want even their kilishi to mention but a few. All right. Now the location where this art is found, I've overflowed this. I told us it's found in the northern part of Nigeria. That is where this art can be found. So having said this, I guess let's look at the characteristics features of the art. Now, they make mural and low relief on the wall of their houses. I told you before now that they, make, they don't believe in standing figures. They don't believe in images. So rather, they engrave their designs on the wall of their house. You see beautiful geometric shapes and angular designs on the wall of their houses. That is one of the characteristic features of what the house are at. They make beautiful mural. What, when you hear the word mural, what comes to mind? Mural is painting on the wall. Now, when you paint on the wall, but this time they don't just paint on the wall, they make it a relief. It's kind of embossed or, or engraved. It's kind of embossed or what? Or engraved. So that's the kind of um, mirror they make. So whenever you see the word mirror, just know it means what? Painting on the wall. So they make murals and low relief on the wall of what? Their houses. The number two characteristic feature of what the house art is that their mirror and relief are done with decorative designs. They don't just make dry designs. It is intricate and what's decorative. And then the third characteristic features of there are more. You can add your own as you discover, as you read further, is that their sculptural works, statues are abstract. For those of them that believe or that make sculptural or statues, they are what abstract, which is what non-figurative in form. So their abstract, their works are what abstract works, and they are non-figurative in form. So now this is a picture of what I'm trying to explain of what the house are. You see how beautiful the world looks. So interesting. You see the intricate designs. They take their time to make those carvings, those engravings, and then sometimes they do what they add a little color paint on them. And it comes out very loud and very sound. So that is that with the house and the Mbare Bio art. So in summary, I guess now we talked about the Mbare art and also explained the house art. I told you that the Mbari people, they believe that if somebody is suffering, it simply means it's a punishment from the gods. Now they will have to build a house 
to appease the gods. And that house, nobody looks at it, nobody goes into it. You just build it and leave it there to decay as a sign of what sacrifice or appreciation to the gods. That yet you appreciate him for the life he's given and all that, all that. That is their belief. That's why they build them very house. And also we talked about the house art, which I explained that they build, they make their intricate designs on the wall of their on the wall of their houses, you know, with and then they 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 believe in utilitarian objects. They make their designs on guard, that's calabash, you know, they make their designs on fabric, they produce belts, blanksmiths and goldsmiths. That's the kind of work they um, the house art they do. Now, I also talked about the history of the following art, which is the Ambari art and the house art. I told us a brief history, how they came about to life. And then finally, we also discussed, we talked about the location and the characteristics, features of these two art. Now, having said this, I want to believe you crap everything. Okay. Now, it's Q and A time. All right. So, the first question I have here is, I say, state two characteristics, features of the Ambari art. Two characteristic features of the Mbari art. You remember I told you that their shape, the shape of this, um, this, uh, the their figure, are elongated and it is it has geometric shape. Now I also told you that we have geometric designs painted in the wall of the Mbari house. Now the second question is, what is the medium used in the production of house art? What is the what are the medium? What are the medium used in the production of house art? Yes, somebody can say calabash. Yes. Relief on the wall, yeah. Tire and die, do guard, and yes, these are the designs, these are the medium used for the house art. Thank you so very much. And now let's dive into the exam guard to see what we have there. Okay. All right. So now we are on the wall of our exam guide. Oh, beautiful. So we are going straight. What we did today is cultural and creative arts is checked. And then we go straight. I want to know by now you should have been able to, you know, find your way around the exam guide. So let's go straight into it and see what we have there. So you just click on let's get started. All right. So today we are going to try question number 12. Yes, question number two. FX Tax 77 Max was a replica of the original Max produced by the Dash people. Amazing question. FX Tax 77 Max was a replica of the original Max produced by the Dash people. Yes, you remember the FX Tax face? So it is produced by which people? Did I hear you say Ese, Ibuku, Nok, Yoruba, or Benin? If you choose Benin, that is the correct answer. So Benin is the correct answer. So let's see question seven and let's see what we have there. Okay, looking at the faces, these three wise men, the faces you have there. Okay, so using the picture above to answer the question below. Figure I, I is a symbol of dash. Figure I I that's figure I I the middle one A Aquashi stone B Ayamu C Festak D Olukon and E Sango So what does the image represent? We talked about it in our class. I flogged it. I showed you some of these images. So which image does figure I I represent? And if you say first stack marks, and then you are correct. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide. Now, the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now, you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. Now, it is a must-have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you, and bye-bye.